Synoptic Gospels are, um, actually I don't know why they call them precisely the Synoptic Gospels, but Mark, Matthew, and Luke are the Synoptic Gospels, and they are very, very similar to one another. Scholars study them together because they are so similar. Which Gospels left out of that list? John. John is not a synoptic gospel. John, if you if you compare Mark, Matthew, and Luke, you'll be like, oh my gosh, there's a bunch of stuff that's really similar here. If you look at John, it's totally different. So scholars almost always um, look at John in a completely um, different context. But Mark, Luke, and Matthew are similar. They study them together. And part of the issue, the synoptic problem is, why are these things so similar to one another? And how can we explain their similarity? Now, you could explain their similarity. Oh, do you have a question, Jackie? No, I'm Italian. What's that? No, I was Italian. Oh, what? I no, I was Italian similarity. Oh. The similarities of yeah. Mark. Yeah, what are some of the similarities then? Um, Mark was the first gospel written in Matthew, which was by and um Often the word for Mark is called um, Mark in priority. Yeah, we're going to talk about all that. Let's jump ahead. So I'm going to stop you there. We're going to get to that. Because that's one of the solutions to the synoptic problem. The synoptic problem is why are these things so similar? And there are various solutions. We're going to discuss two solutions to the synoptic problem today. The reason it's a problem is because it's not self-evidently clear how they could be so similar. You could explain their similarities if Jesus had a bunch of uh, court transcribers following him around during his life, right? You guys have seen live court settings where they have the person who's typing up every word, right? You could account for the similarities that way. However, that's there's there's pretty much zero possibility that that's what happened. Um, there's no good evidence that any of the people who wrote the Gospels were people who lived and worked with Jesus when he was alive. Um, they're almost, almost absolutely certain, scholars are almost absolutely certain that these are second or third hand accounts, not written by people who were there when this stuff happened. So the idea that they're so similar because everybody was there is not really a good answer to the synoptic problem. So, why are they so similar? We're going to look at two other answers to that, that problem. Now, can I have um, four volunteers? You go first. You're going to be Q. We'll explain what that means in a little bit. Just write a sentence about Jesus. Like a, a phrase that Jesus might have said or something that Jesus did. You know, just say, you know, Jesus healed somebody or something. Just write, write, it, write down something that Jesus might have said. Uh, make it good. Can I have another volunteer who writes something else? Kristen? You're, you're going to be Mark. Write something about Jesus. Maybe wait until after you see what he oh, did and then like add something that's related or similar. Uh, I'm writing and adding. Um, writing a, a sentence. Yeah, writing a sentence that may be related to what he's got. Until they're done, and then write something that might be related to what they, they wrote. And Jackie, the same thing here, what, what I said. Just write something about Jesus, but that may or may not be related to what they said. Alright, while Jackie is finishing, I'm going to have. Wait, who is Mark? Or wait, no. Can you, you are going to be the author of the Gospel of Matthew here. Okay. Now, what we're going to suggest is that you've got three sources. She's got three sources that she's going to use to compose the Gospel of Matthew. You've got the Q source. You've got the Gospel of Mark in front of you. 
And you've got this other stuff that we're just going to call the M source because it's stuff that the Matthew book has that nobody else has. Does that make sense? Now, what I want you to do is write a passage that combines these three things. You're going to combine the Q source, the Mark source, and your M source and create a passage based on that. But when you do so, use the blue, red, and green markers to compose it so that when you're drawing from this, just put it all together, but use the appropriate markers when you're piecing it together. Now while she's doing that, Jackie, <laughs> while Dana's doing that, Jackie, I want you to compose the Gospel of Luke, a passage, what you're going to do is use Q, Mark, and the L source, which is the Luke source. You're going to combine the blue, red, and black stuff to create a passage that goes together. But huh? That's going. This is going to go into your Gospel of Luke. You're combining. The Q source, the Mark source, and the L source to make up a passage for the Gospel of Luke. And I want you to combine these three things, but maybe embellish them or something like that as you do it. Do you want me to, do you want me to do it instead? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What we have here is the idea that in the first century there were all these different independent strains of information about Jesus, some of which may have been written down, some of which may have just been passed down orally. We have what we're calling the Q source that said Jesus healed the sick. We have the Gospel of Mark where it says Jesus walked on water. We've got the M source where it says Jesus helped the people find their inner life. And then we have this L source where it says Jesus performed many miracles. Now, Dana, was it you who wrote Matthew? Yes. So Dana is the author of Matthew. She's got a copy of the Q source. She's got a copy of the Gospel of Mark. But also she's heard these stories, this other group of stories about Jesus helping people find their inner light. And she's got those in her memory. So when she sits down to write the Gospel of Matthew, she combines them all. So you get Jesus healed the sick and walked on water. He also helped people to find their inner light. Right? You can tell from this, if you have all the sources, it looked like what she did was she pieced together the Q source, the Mark source, and the M source. Jackie slash me was the author of the Gospel of Luke, and what we think that Luke had was this source called Q, a copy of the Gospel of Mark, and then, wow, I didn't have these stories passed down orally that ended up in the Gospel of Matthew, but I did have these other stories passed down orally that are part of this L source, and I write this passage in Luke, Jesus healed many sick people. After doing so, he walked on water. Clearly, Jesus performed many wonderful miracles. It's a pretty straightforward explanation of how one might solve the synoptic problem. Why are all these Gospels so similar? Well, because they used similar sources to begin with. Why do we have Jesus healed the sick and Jesus healed many sick people? Well, because both Dana, right? Both Dana and I were utilizing a copy of the Gospel of Q. Why walked on water and walked on water? Well, because both Dana and I had a copy of the Gospel of Mark. So one explanation is why are they so similar? Well, because we were utilizing the same sources. Now, if eighteen hundred years later. Let's say 1,800 years later, if Q existed, it's no longer here anymore. Nobody's got a copy of Q. Nobody's got a copy of the M source. Nobody's got a copy of the L source. All we have are Mark, Matthew, and Luke. 